Welcome to Review Central. This is DCAT reviewer number 10, featuring questions for the DCAT statistics and probability subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the De La Salle College Admission Test or DCAT. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous DCATs. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Question number one. Two sets of numbers have the same mean but different standard deviations. Both sets have a mean of 15. The standard deviation of the first set of numbers is 9, while the second set of numbers has a standard deviation of 0.05. Which of the following observations is not true? A. The numbers on the first set are all equal to 9. B. The variance of the second set of numbers is 0.0025. C. The numbers on the second set are closely clustered around the mean. D. The first set of numbers is more spread out about the mean compared to the second set. E. None of the above. The correct answer is A. That the numbers on the first set are all equal to 9 is not true. Let's tabulate the given values for the two sets as follows. Standard deviation is a measure of how close the results are to the mean. Larger standard deviation means the values are more spread about the mean. Smaller standard deviation means the values are closer to the mean making the data more consistent. Let's examine and evaluate each of the given answer choices based on our tabulation. Answer choice B is true. Variance is the square of the standard deviation, 0.05 squared is indeed equal to 0.0025. C is also true. The numbers on the second set are closely clustered around the mean, since the standard deviation is only 0.05, meaning that the results are very close to the mean. D is likewise true. The first set of numbers is more spread out around the mean compared to the second set, since the standard deviation is 9, meaning that the results are very far from the mean. A, on the other hand, is not true. Having a standard deviation of 9 does not mean that the values are all equal to 9. In fact, the problem does not tell us the actual values at all. Question number 2. In tossing 3 coins, what are the chances of getting at most 2 tails? A. 1 8 B. 1 4 C. 1 half D. 2 thirds E. 7 over 8 The correct answer is E. The chances of getting at most two tails in tossing three coins is 7 over 8. In tossing three coins, there are eight possible outcomes, as shown. To get at most two tails, we can get either two tails and one head, one tail and two heads, and no tails or all heads. Let's find and count these from our list of possible outcomes. Two tails and one head, there are three of these. One tail and two heads, there are also three of these. And finally, no tail at all or all heads, there's one of this. Therefore, there are seven ways of getting at most two tails. In other words, the probability of getting at most two tails is, 7 over 8. Question number 3. Interpreting data. A psychologist feels that playing soft music during a test will change the results of the test. The psychologist is not sure whether the grades will be higher or lower. In the past, the mean of the scores was 73. What are the null and alternative hypotheses in this problem? A. Null hypothesis, the mean grade is equal to 73. Alternative hypothesis, the mean grade is greater than 73. B. Null hypothesis, the mean grade is equal to 73. Alternative hypothesis, the mean grade is less than 73. C. Null hypothesis, the mean grade is equal to 73. Alternative hypothesis, the mean grade is not equal to 73. D. Null hypothesis, the mean grade is not equal to 73. Alternative hypothesis, 
the mean grade is less than 73. E, null hypothesis, the mean grade is not equal to 73. Alternative hypothesis, the mean grade is greater than 73. The correct answer is C. The null hypothesis is the statement being tested. The alternative hypothesis is the statement often opposite of the null hypothesis. Therefore, the null hypothesis is, the mean score is equal to 73. And the alternative hypothesis is, the mean score is not equal to 73. Question number 4. Assume that the level of confidence and the margin of error have been set. If there is no preconceived idea of the value of the population proportion P, then what is the most conservative estimate for P? A, minus 1. B, 0. C, 0 0.25. D, 0 0.5. E, 1. The correct answer is D, 0 0.5. The formula to construct a confidence interval estimate for a population proportion is as shown. From the formula, the most conservative estimate for P is 0.5. This is because if P is large, then 1 minus P is small, and vice versa. If P equals 0.5, then 1 minus P equals 0.5, which limits their product to a maximum value of 0.25. Go ahead and do a what if by substituting P in the formula with the different values in the answer choices, and compare the results. Question number 5. Professor Paddling had computed for the mean score of his students in an exam, and he found it to be 84.25. But one of the scores that he used in the computation was incorrect. Instead of 98, he mistakenly wrote 89. If the class has 20 students and if he would do the necessary adjustment, what would be the effect to the mean? A. The mean would decrease by 0.45. B. The mean would decrease by 9. C. The mean would increase by 0.45. D. The mean would increase by 9. E. Nothing will happen to the mean. The correct answer is C. The mean would increase by 0.45. Let S1, S2, S3, S4, all the way to S19, be the other 19 scores. Let's express the original mean, with the erroneous score of 89, in an equation. Let's also express the new mean, with a corrected score of 98, instead of 89, in another equation. Now, let's rewrite the new mean equation such that, instead of writing 98, we write 89 plus 9 on its place. 89 plus 9 is equal to 98 so the equation is essentially unchanged. And then we rewrite it yet again as shown. Take note that we are simply expressing the equation of the new mean in a different manner, but it essentially remains the same. Have you noticed something peculiar with our latest form of the equation of the new mean? That's right, the first part looks exactly the same as the equation for the original mean. Let's rewrite the new mean equation once again this time to reflect the fact that the first part is equal to the original mean. 9 over 20 is equal to 0.45. Therefore, the new mean is 0.45 more than the original mean, which means that the mean increased by 0.45. Question number 6. A genetics lab claims to be able to increase the likelihood that a pregnancy will result in a boy being born. Researchers want to test the claim. Suppose that the null hypothesis is that the genetics lab has no effect on gender outcome. Which of the following statements will commit a type 2 error? A. The researchers believe that the genetics lab does not influence the gender outcome when, in fact, it does. B. The researchers believe that the genetics lab does influence the gender outcome when, in fact, it does. C. The researchers believe that the genetics lab does not influence the gender outcome when, in fact, it does not. D. The researchers believe that the genetics lab does influence the gender outcome when, in fact, it does not. E. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Let's do a quick review of type 1 and type 2 errors in statistics. In statistical hypothesis testing, a type 1 error is the mistaken rejection of an actually true null hypothesis, while a type 2 error is the failure to reject a null hypothesis that is actually false. 
by believing that the genetics lab does not influence the gender outcome when, in fact, it does, the researchers committed a type 2 error. Question number 7. In how many ways can a committee consisting of five members be formed from six congressmen and four congresswomen, if at least two congresswomen should be a member of the committee? A. 82 B. 93 C. 186 D. 201 E. 323 The correct answer is C. 186 there are three different cases or scenarios that can satisfy the given conditions for the committee members. These are 1. Four congresswomen and one congressman. 2. Three congresswomen and two congressmen. And 3. Two congresswomen and three congressmen. Now let's solve the possible combinations for each case. Case 1. Four congresswomen and one congressman. The possible combinations can be computed as follows. The possible combinations for case 1 is 6. Case 2, 3 congresswomen and 2 congressmen. We compute the possible combinations similar to case 1, and must end up with 60 possible combinations for case 2. For case 3, this time with 3 congresswomen and 2 congressmen, our computation for the total possible combinations should result to 120. Finally, we add the total possible combinations we computed for each of the three cases, and should end up with 186 possible combinations as the correct and final answer. Question number 8. Tickets numbered 1 to 100 are mixed up and then a ticket is drawn at random. What is the probability that the ticket drawn has a number that is a multiple of 4 or divisible by 5? A. 1 fifth B. 1 fourth C. 2 fifths D. 9 over 20 E 1 half The correct answer is C 2 fifths For this problem, we need to identify the numbers between 1 and 100 that are multiples of 4 or divisible by 5. Let's start with the numbers that are a multiple of 4. The numbers are as shown. There are 25 of them. And here are the numbers between 1 and 100 that are divisible by 5. There are 20 of them. To find the numbers between 1 and 100 that are a multiple of 4 or divisible by 5, we simply put together the above two sets of numbers, making sure to count only once the numbers that are common in both sets. There are 5 of them. These are the numbers 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. The total number should be 40. Therefore, the probability that the ticket drawn has a number that is a multiple of 4 or divisible by 5 is, 40 over 100, or 2 fifths. Question number 9. In a boys high school with 200 students, 32 play soccer, 18 play basketball, and 8 play both sports. If a student is selected at random, find the probability that the student plays soccer or basketball. A. 1 over 5 B. 1 over 4 C. 4 over 25 D. 17 over 100 E. 21 over 100 the correct answer is E, 21 over 100. The given values in the problem can be represented by a simple Venn diagram as shown. From the diagram, we can proceed to compute for the probability to randomly select a student that plays soccer or basketball as, 21 over 100. Question number 10. A fair standard die was rolled twice. Find the probability of getting the same number of spots, given that the sum of the spots is 6. A. 1 over 5 B. 1 over 4 C. 2 over 5 D. 2 over 3 E. 1 over 2 The correct answer is A. 1 over 5. There are five ways to get a sum of six in rolling a fair standard die twice. 
Out of the five, there is only one way of getting the same number of spots. Therefore, the probability of getting the same number of spots given that the sum of the spots is 1 over 5. You have just completed DCAT Reviewer number 10, which featured questions for the DCAT Statistics and Probability subtest. If you wish to watch more DCAT reviewers for the DCAT Statistics and Probability subtest, check out our DCAT Statistics and Probability Reviewers playlist. Check out also our other DCAT playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central, and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DCAT, and we look forward to your exciting days as a Lazalian. Animo LaSalle